He's considered to be the oldest human mummy found intact, and scientists believe he died more than 5,000 years ago. The results flashed across the screen and the lab fell silent. The DNA sequence was clean, perfect, and it proved the last decade of research on Utsi, the Iceman, was a colossal mistake. Utsi, the Iceman. This is the world's first replica of Utsi, the Iceman, one of the world's most famous mummies. This 5,000-year-old mummy, discovered frozen in the Alps, held one of history's greatest secrets in his genetic code. A new deep scan just unlocked it, revealing his true dark-skinned appearance and an ancestry so unexpected it rewrites the map of ancient Europe. Forget everything you thought you knew. The real Otzi is finally here. 5,000 years of silence. On a crisp September day in 1991, something happened that would change archaeology forever. It started as just another mountain hike for two German tourists, Helmut and Erika Simon, as they made their way through a rugged pass in the Utztal Alps on the border between Austria and Italy, the late summer sun had melted the ancient glacier just enough to reveal something unbelievable. There, sticking out of the ice, was the body of a man. At first, they figured it was a tragic accident, a modern climber who hadn't made it, but as they got closer, things got weird. The man wasn't wearing modern gear. He had on thick leather shoes stuffed with grass for insulation, a surprisingly clever way to keep warm. Clutched nearby was a copper axe, its blade green with age. It was his body, however, that was the most startling part. His skin was leathery and dark, but it was all there. The ice had acted like a time capsule, preserving him almost perfectly. News travels fast in the mountains. Soon, authorities and archaeologists were swarming the site. What began as a potential recovery mission quickly turned into the scientific investigation of a lifetime. Carbon dating dropped a bombshell. This man had been frozen for more than 5,300 years. He lived around 3,300 BCE during the Copper Age. They named him Utzi, after the valley where he was found. Utzi was more than just a mummy. He was a window into a lost world. Every single detail about him told a story. Forensic analysis showed he was about 45 years old when he passed, which was basically old age back then. He stood about 5 feet 3 inches tall and weighed roughly 110 pounds. While small by today's standards, his body was tough, built for a hard life in the mountains. One of the wildest discoveries was on his skin. 61 tattoos. These weren't for decoration. They were simple lines and crosses placed directly over joints and areas where he likely felt chronic pain from arthritis. Get this. Scientists now believe they were a form of ancient pain relief, almost like an early version of acupuncture. It's incredible to think that people thousands of years ago had medical treatments we're only now beginning to understand. His clothes were just as amazing. He wore leggings made from goat hide, a bearskin cap, and a cloak woven from grass. Every item was a masterclass in survival, but it was his gear that showed he was someone important. Along with a flint knife and a longbow, he carried that copper axe. In the Copper Age, an axe like that was like owning a supercar today. Copper was rare, expensive, and hard to work with. It was both a powerful tool and a major status symbol. This wasn't just some random guy. Otzi had standing in his community. But as scientists looked closer, a darker story emerged. His end was not peaceful. It was violent. His left hand had a deep defensive wound, showing he fought for his life. His ribs were bruised. The final blow, though, was an arrowhead lodged deep in his left shoulder. It had severed a major artery, and he would have bled out in minutes. This was a deliberate act, making things even more mysterious. Traces of blood from four other individuals were found on his gear. Were they friends or foes? 
We still don't know. To top it all off, he was probably feeling awful anyway. He had atherosclerosis, a condition that hardens the arteries. The thing is, he was a ticking time bomb for a heart attack. He was found high in the mountains, which suggests he was on the run trying to escape. His life was cut short in a brutal personal conflict. But the real fight wasn't just on the mountain, it was in his DNA. Science's embarrassing error. For years after his discovery, Utzi was a global sensation. Scientists were desperate to unlock every secret held within his frozen cells. The ultimate prize? His complete genetic code. In 2012, they announced they had done it. They had mapped Otzi's genome, a monumental achievement for the time. The findings made headlines everywhere. They concluded Otzi had light skin and brown eyes, which was a surprise given his dark, mummified appearance. But here's the kicker. The analysis revealed what they called step ancestry. This was a genetic link to Indo-European people who, according to the history books, arrived in Central Europe hundreds of years after Otzi lived. If this was true, it meant our entire timeline of early European migration was wrong. It suggested these massive population movements happened way earlier than anyone thought. Utzi was suddenly seen as this incredible genetic bridge connecting ancient, isolated Europeans with the newcomers who would eventually shape the continent. It was a fantastic story, one that rewrote history. But some scientists were skeptical. You see, working with ancient DNA is incredibly tricky. It's fragile and breaks down over thousands of years. The biggest risk is contamination. Tiny fragments of modern DNA, from the researchers handling the samples, from the lab, even from the air, can get mixed in and create a totally false result. Despite the warnings, the 2012 findings were largely accepted. The image of Utsi as a genetic pioneer became part of his legend. It's funny when you think about it. For more than a decade, this was the official story. Then, technology took a massive leap forward. By 2023, the science of ancient genomics had become incredibly advanced with super strict protocols to prevent contamination. A new team from the world-renowned Max Planck Institute decided to run the test again, but this time, do it perfectly. They took a new sample from Utzi's hip bone, which is dense and better protected. The process was painstakingly slow, designed to ensure that every single piece of DNA they analyzed was genuinely his. When the new sequence was complete, the results sent a shockwave through the scientific community. The step ancestry, the very discovery that had made headlines a decade earlier, was completely gone. It had never been there at all. It was a ghost in the machine a false signal created by modern DNA contamination. The groundbreaking 2012 study was fundamentally flawed. Utzi was not a genetic bridge. He didn't rewrite the migration timeline. The story that had been told for over 10 years was simply put wrong. It was a humbling moment for science a powerful lesson that even the most exciting discoveries need to be double and triple checked. With the old story erased, his true genetic code revealed a shocking origin. The Anatolian farmer. With the contamination wiped away, Utzi's true genetic story could finally be told. And it was more mind-blowing than anyone could have predicted. The new clean data showed that over 92% of Utzi's ancestry came from a single group, Neolithic Anatolian farmers. These were people who migrated from the area of modern-day Turkey about 8,000 years ago. They were the ones who brought the agricultural revolution to Europe, changing the continent from a land of hunter-gatherers to one of settled farmers. The remaining small piece of his DNA came from Europe's original hunter-gatherers. But what was astonishing was the lack of anything else. It meant that Utzi's ancestors had arrived in Europe, 
settled in the isolated Alps, and then barely mixed with any other groups for thousands of years. While the rest of Europe was a genetic melting pot, his community was like an island, cut off from the rest of the world. This isolation meant something profound. Utzi was a member of a nearly vanished branch of humanity. His genetic line, that of the early Anatolian farmers, was almost completely wiped out by later migrations. He wasn't an ancestor to modern Europeans, he was a ghost from a lost population. But if his people vanished, did any trace of them survive? The answer is yes, and it's in a place you would never guess. Utzi's closest living genetic relatives aren't in the Alps. They live hundreds of miles away on the Mediterranean island of Sardinia. Like Utzi's ancestors, the people of Sardinia remained isolated for millennia, preserving an ancient genetic signature that has disappeared almost everywhere else on the mainland. The surprises didn't stop there. The DNA also held the code for his physical appearance, and it destroyed every reconstruction ever made of him. For decades, Otzi was depicted with fair skin, light-colored eyes, and a full head of shaggy brown hair. It was an image we all knew. It was also completely wrong. The new analysis was crystal clear. Otzi had dark skin, far darker than the average modern European. His eyes were not light. They were a deep brown. And that thick hair? It was a fantasy. Genetic markers showed he had a strong predisposition for male pattern baldness and was likely losing his hair long before he passed away. This wasn't just a minor update, it was a radical transformation. It forced everyone to confront the fact that ancient Europe was far more diverse than often imagined. The old reconstructions, made in good faith, were shaped by modern biases about what an ancient European should look like. The truth was more complex and far more interesting. The real Utzi looked nothing like the man we thought we knew, but his genetics didn't just rewrite his family tree, they revealed his hidden weaknesses. A walking medical chart. When you start to wonder about all this new information, you realize something amazing. We often think of history as this grand, sweeping story, but Utzi's DNA brings it down to a deeply personal level. The thing is, this man who lived over 5,000 years ago was dealing with a lot of the same problems we face today. His genes told a story of a life filled with pain and sickness. He had a strong genetic predisposition for heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and even obesity. These aren't just modern-day ailments. They were written into human biology thousands of years ago. His body was a catalog of his suffering. Advanced scans showed he had painful gallstones, whipworm parasites in his intestines, and traces of the bacteria that causes Lyme disease, making him the oldest known case in human history. His lungs were coated in soot, likely from spending years around open fires. And as we know, his joints ached with arthritis, which is why he turned to those therapeutic tattoos for relief. Utsi was not some superhuman survivor of a bygone era. He was a man in his mid-40s whose body was breaking down, a walking medical chart of the harsh realities of Copper Age life. So, why was his community so unhealthy? It likely came back to that same isolation that preserved their unique ancestry. Living in a small, closed-off group in the mountains meant there was very little genetic mixing with outsiders. While this kept their culture pure, it also allowed harmful genetic mutations, like those for heart disease, to build up over generations. Without new genes coming in to add diversity, the population may have become more vulnerable to certain illnesses. It was the price they paid for living apart from the world. It's a strange thought, isn't it? that this man, frozen in time, represents a story that played out all over the world. His lineage was a dead end. It was eventually swallowed by waves of new people who transformed Europe. His body is one of the last remaining echoes of a people and a way of life that simply didn't last. 
The final days of that life were filled with urgency and danger. He had eaten two large meals shortly before he passed, suggesting he was either fueling up for a long journey or had just finished a strenuous one. His weapons were freshly sharpened and repaired. He was a man on alert, ready for a confrontation, but even his preparations weren't enough. The story of Utzi proves that the past is never truly settled. If science was so wrong about him for so long, what other facts are just waiting to be overturned? Let us know your thoughts below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more hidden stories from history.